In this example, we'll take a look at the hypergeometric distribution. With a hypergeometric distribution, it is a special type of discrete distribution where we're looking at, again, discrete information, typically the number of, of damaged or defective products. In this example, we're going to take a look at a shipment of products. For this example, it's 15 refrigerators that we're receiving, two of them are damaged, and 13 are good. So let's suppose we're at the receiving department of a company such as Lowe's. They're inspecting a sample of five refrigerators at random to see if they are defective. The number of damaged refrigerators in the sample is a random variable x. We want to calculate the probability that exactly two are defective. What I want to start with in this example first is because there's quite a bit of information. It's just going through the notation. First, we have our capital N. That's our total sample size. Whereas lowercase n is how many we're inspecting. It's that sample size that we're pulling. So in this case, we had 15 refrigerators, but we're going to sample five of them at random. So our lowercase n is that sample that we're pulling out of that shipment. Our s is our number that are defective in the total sample. And in this case, we know two were damaged in the shipment of 15. X is the probability that we're solving for. We want to know in this example that there's exactly two defective. Pi is our ratio defective. We know based on past experience that two were damaged out of the 15. We're also going to calculate N minus S. That's looking at the number that are not defective and n minus lowercase n minus x and those are the number that are not defective in the sample pulled. In this example as well I have the calculations in here and you'll see me change the, the font color because as you'll notice the calculations can be pretty difficult. So for n, our capital N, that's our total sample size and that was our 15. Our lowercase n is a sample that we're pulling, those five refrigerators out of the 15. Our s was a total, was well, sorry, our s is a number defective in the total sample. So we knew that two were damaged out of the 15. And then our x is what we're solving for, and we're looking that there's ex for exactly two defective. Our pi is our ratio of what's defective. So we know that 2, our B18, which was S, divided by our total number sampled, our capital N, which was B16. So that's 0.133. N minus S is our B16 minus B18. And you'll see we'll use this in our calculations. So it's nice to have this as a step within our calculations already. And then our lowercase n minus x is b17 minus b19. Now we're going to go through and start using our calculations. Our mean is going to be equal to our lowercase n, which was b17, multiplied times pi which was B21. So that's our number sampled, the 5, multiplied times the probability it will be defective. And then our standard deviation is equal to the square root of B17, which is our lowercase n, multiplied by B21, which is our pi, which is multiplied times 1 minus our pi, and then that value, when we take the square root, is multiplied by the square root of B16, our capital N, minus our lowercase n, B17, divided by our capital N, our total sample size, B16, minus 1. So again, I would encourage you, as you're typing this in, to pause the video to make sure you have that equation correct. Once we have our standard deviation, now we can calculate our probability. 
So our probability is taking apart this equation. So you'll see here, I've broken down each part of that equation so that we've got the pieces multiplied by each other divided by the last one. So for the sake of time, I'm not going to read through that step by step, but I want to make sure you can see the equation so that you can type that in. This is essentially calculating then, based on all of that information, the probability that we will have exactly two defects, given what we know in the past, that two out of 15 have been defective, and now I'm going to pull five sample in my small sample size, and I want to know that two in that five are defective. So that's quite the long in calculation, which is where Excel comes in very useful because we can calculate that same information using the hypergeometric function within Excel. So using the hypergeome.dist function, we can use our sample size of S, so our B19, or sorry, which is we're looking for that X value of two. We're also going to use the number in the sample, which is B17, that's our lowercase n. Then B18 is going to be what, what we expect to be, we know in the past two have been defected out of the population. And then B16 is a number in the population. So as we look at this, we start with a sample. Right, we're pulling five, we're looking for two, and then our population is we had 15 and we knew two were defective. So we're using the population information from the past to look at what we have in that smaller sample of five. And we're not doing cumulative yet because we're calculating the PDF, which is why that's the zero. And here we'll get the same value that we had before just a much simpler calculation using the Excel function. So the calculation or the probability that exactly two are defective is 9.52%. Our cumulative then will be the same calculation as cell B30, but now we're changing it to cumulative, so it's a one at the end. So the probability that up to and including two will be defective is 100%. As always, I would encourage you to graph these. So I've created graphs, so we only have five in our sample, so we could have zero defective, one, two, three, four, or five defective. And then I've calculated the probability for each of those occurring. So the probability of zero being defective is 42.9%. One being defective is 47.6%, and two being defective is 0.095%. And then the probability of three, four, and five is so minuscule that with three decimal places, it's essentially zero. With the CDF, it's cumulative, so we're adding those together. That's why when we get to probability of two defects, we get up to 100%. So graphically, we would expect zero or one. There's a high probability we'll have zero or one defect out of those five. And when we get to two, we would expect then that would cover 100% of our, of our sample would have either zero, one, or two defects. If I was pulling five at random, any combination, I would expect zero, one, or two defects. Again, from a business or managerial perspective, this is going to help me understand what the probability is that I will have a defect. Of those five that I pull in my sample, I would expect there's a good probability, right, that I'm gonna have one defect. So I would wanna plan for that accordingly. When I'm going through checking my inventory, adding or purchasing more products, 
so that I could plan to have one of those five defective and I'll need to plan to have additional products on hand to cover that.